A number of years ago, whilst doing some studies on homophobia, I noticed how the impact of social difference, especially on definitions of what is good and bad, right or wrong, or acceptable or unacceptable, seemed to emanate from seven pillars underscoring uh, so many of our societies. These seven pillars, which we'll explore in a moment, often seem to be founded or based in uh, particular views of patriarchy within so many cultures and especially within their religions. The patriarchy often uh, presents itself as discriminatory against others whilst protectionist towards itself and therefore we could call it a hegemonic patriarchy. This image of the seven pillars is something I developed in PowerPoint quite a number of years ago and it's seen many iterations since then. It's the ways in which societies, um, especially founded on core principles, then develop to decide what they consider to be good and evil and to be um, especially inclusive of some whilst exclusive of others. The first pillar showing here is to do with religion and look how many of the world's uh, um, cultures and societies throughout the world can trace themselves back to original uh, religious developments. But it's these religions that then often go on to influence the law, maybe even the politics within individual countries and right down to how those countries then define what they consider to be um, appropriate family life, for example. Some of the pillars also show how um, the particular values of certain societies are then embedded, especially within masculinist organisations, which have often tended to be the police or various militias throughout the world, as well as healthcare, education, right from young children onwards and through to university life, and also how all of this is perpetuated through various media. Just before returning to that slide of the seven pillars, I just want to refer to something that Michel Foucault promulgated back in his um, 1984, volume one of the history of sexuality, when he spoke of a triple edict. And by that he meant something which is shrouded in taboo, silenced, and therefore seen as non-existent. That's what he described as the triple edict. So you can see the triple edict coming into play here, but also there are other uh, words that we need to consider as well to do with stigma, prejudice, discrimination and invisibilization. It's important that we consider words, maybe their origins, their etymology, but also the impact they can have on people's lives and the way we think about things, even now in the current days. So stigma is an ancient Greek word which literally just means a mark or a sign. But since Irvin Goffman's writings in the 1950s and 60s, we often refer to it now as something which is a discrediting mark or sign. Stereotype literally means two of something, and therefore with prejudice, prejudgment, it's often uh, um, experienced by once a person has made up their mind about someone because maybe of a discrediting mark or characteristic, a stigma, once the individual sees more than one person like this, then they apply the same discrimination towards them, and that's prejudice or prejudgment. The impact this can then have on individuals is truly horrendous. Look in the centre of this slide, which talks about stigmatising others just for their difference. That's the mark or the sign of stigma. And then by acting on that, especially negatively, that's when people are discriminated against. Or maybe even not referring to them or mentioning them at all, um, denying their existence, and that's the invisibilization. Now, six of the pop-out blurbs on here can show how um, individuals who are then stigmatised by others might um, perceive this themselves and might feel this oppression within them. So anger, um, uh, expressions of being bullied, feeling feelings of low self-esteem or guilt and self-blame and the ways in which individuals can turn this in on themselves. 
Just exploring one of the dimensions on the previous slide, that of low self-esteem. Look how this can have a really negative impact on a person's sexual and gendered health and well-being. If somebody is suffering with low self-esteem, on the one hand, they may be constantly looking down on themselves, have no self-regard or appreciation. On the, at the same time, they're often desperate for love and attention and would be frightened of being not accepted or rejected. Returning to the slide, and this time looking at the red bar at the bottom, look how so much negativity of se um, social difference can actually spread misinformation about people. And that taps into the stereotyping um, of particular individuals. Or it may be a case of them being totally hidden or invisibilized. And therefore, if they are invisibilized, then um, they're certainly not giving, uh, given any equality or equal regard within their societies final element on this slide which we haven't spoken about so far is the dynamism, the power for equality and freedom. Whilst some people may suffer, um, especially mental health consequences of this social difference, the negativities that they perceive from others, it is possible to turn this around, moving from um, uh, victim through survivor onto thriver and certainly working towards greater equality and freedom personal health and well-being, regard and inclusion within their societies and their cultures. So starting off with those seven pillars and seeing how they might have a negative impact on some people, but also looking at ways in which all of this can then be turned around through the dynamic force for equality and freedom.